Hello. <laughs> Good morning. If you are in the putting order to your API ecosystem, you are on the right track. Otherwise, you have other tracks with interesting talk as well. You can leave now if, if you feel like. I, I don't mind. Uh, I'm going basically to discuss about API management solutions. So I'm going to introduce the term what's API management and uh, my intention is to give you an overview of different API management solutions. So who am I? Uh, my name is Tony Tassanin from Barcelona. Uh, currently I'm working as an agile coach in uh, eDreams of the Geo, an online travel agency. We have a booth outside if you want, if you want to go there for a while. Uh, before being an agile coach, I was a, a developer, sometimes with the title of uh, an architect. Um, uh, While well, I was working as an architect in Everett, which is a, a Spanish IT consulting firm, I had the opportunity to, to review uh, different API management solutions and to, to see what they are about. We were trying to help our customers in order to, to, to do different things with those, with those solutions, so we had to evaluate some of them. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I'm not going to talk about what's an API. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about how to build a, a, a REST API or a SOAP based or whatever. I'm not going to discuss that. But I'm going to discuss about this piece of API management that you can include to your systems. So this, uh, the, the, the target audience for this type of talk, uh, I, I was thinking of people with an architecture mindset. People who not only care about the code that they are writing now, but how is it uh, exposed, how is it going to share, how, how is it going to be communicated and <laughs> about the internals and about the, the communication and, uh, and the composition of the different parts of the system, about all the infrastructure. Regardless is if you are talking about a CTO, a tester, a developer, it's the architecture mindset that could take advantage of this discussion. So what things are we going to be talking about today? I'm going to describe what's an API uh, management solution. Uh, from the point of view of, I, of IT analysts, so uh, that we can share the same vocabulary and we see the different pieces, and uh, maybe seeing that uh, those solutions, you can be inspired in order to think how are you building your APIs today and what pieces can you add to the, to the way you are building them. We are going to review some products. I wanted just to give you a screen capture of different products and just a, a, an overview of, of them so that you know that there are uh, a lot of them and not, not only a, a few. And uh, then I will share uh, my, my opinions, I'm sorry, about uh, how can you use them, how can you use the API management solutions and the risks that you can have if you take the wrong assumptions when you are using them. So let's go. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to know how many of you are currently using some API manager? Please raise your hand. So it's good. I can explain whatever I want and you will believe me. <laughs> An API manager basically is a piece of software that you put in the middle of your API consumers and your original APIs. So you have a single piece of software where every, everything is channeled through that. It's a proxy. As Simon was saying in the introductory talk, in order to solve whatever problem, we add a new layer of indirection. So this is the API manager. So you have a set of internal APIs, uh, and you don't care how the content and how they are built or how they are exposed, they are internal. And this is the initial idea of an API manager. And you have some consumers. The idea is that the API management solution can, can be put in order to expose your APIs to the internet world, to external consumers. This is the initial idea of API management. But this piece of software can be residing inside your internet. So you can use some of the benefits of 
exposing in a centralized way of all of your APIs. But the initial intention is to expose it to, to external consumers. But once you have an internal APR and you want it uh, exposed to the, to, the, to the external world, they use the term that you are virtualizing an API. So when you are exposing your internal API to the external world, you are virtualizing the, the API. As long as everything is centralized in a single piece, what can you do with it? You can be adding uh, security. You can be adding uh, an external uh, uh, a security transport. You can be adding HTTPS or, or symmetric encryption or OAuth or OAuth 2 or whatever security you want without modifying uh, any of your internal APIs. So it's great because you could be adding uh, security without touching any line of code. In case new security standards arrive, you only have to modify them the, the way you are exposing your APIs in a centralized way. Seems cool. What other things can you do? As long as everything is exposed in the same way, uh, you can be adding uh, a cache so that uh, you can improve the performance and you can uh, reduce the amount of uh, transit that, uh, that your APIs are receiving, which is also good or seems good. You can be adding monitoring because everything is centralized, everything is coming from the same place, and maybe with, uh, this, with this centralization, you can be getting new information about maybe the relationship between the calls that you are receiving in your APIs. Maybe you can have information about the consumer that usually use this particular operation. Later on, they will use this other operation, which is good as well. You can be adding pieces of, uh, in order to manage the throttling or the amount of requests that you allow certain consumers to do to your, to your internal APIs. You can manage them uh, with the API management solution because it's a centralized thing. You can add quotas, maybe, uh, in order to allow certain amount of uh, requests for certain consumers, and maybe per day or per month. What else can you do? If you have, maybe you are not in a fancy startup, but you have old uh, APIs, you were building uh, APIs or web services for a long time, and you want them to be exposed to the external world. So you don't have to rewrite them. If you use an, uh, an API management solution, you could be adding transformation to your internal APIs without having to modify or to build anything new. If you have uh, APIs that are REST-based APIs and they are exposing JSON, and you need XML for whatever reason, you can transform it. You can create transformations. And in the transformations, you may be uh, transforming parameters or pra transforming messages, transforming format or transport. You could be hiding parts of the messages. Some of the IDs, maybe, that you are exposing internally, you don't want them to be exposed to the external world. And you can do without modifying anything in your original APIs. So, and what's more important, if you have web services, so web services that are internal, and uh, you've been uh, building them for a long time, and you want to leverage them, you can uh, transform and, uh, the way they are accessed use, using the API management solution. And without adding any line of code, if you have the internal services that are uh, built in PHP, Python, or Ruby, Node, or Java, you don't mind. You are adding all the transformations using this, this new layer without modifying anything. <coughs> and who are your consumers? Your consumers may be in the internet, your, their own applications that you are building, the, your own mobile apps that you want to use your REST APIs in order to interact with your internal world either web applications or mobile applications. But what's more important is that you could, you could be adding external developers to build their applications using your own APIs. 
you have some APIs and you want external developers to build new businesses, to, be, to build new business models based on the sets you have. <coughs> They can be adding, they can be building their mobile applications or their, or their web applications. They don't need to build scrapers in order to extract the information from your, from your web pages if you are using them. But you can <coughs> establish a relationship with them. And you maybe, and maybe they want to make money out of that, so they don't mind paying you. So you are creating a new API economy. You are creating new businesses out of the existing APIs you have. So you are creating a new revenue stream from the APIs you are having only because you have now a mechanism to attract the new developers who are building applications. And you want to attract them. Imagine you are a bank. You are a bank, you have some APIs and you want people to build financial applications using the, the, the APIs. It, it, these people who want to build those financial applications are, are going to charge their consumers. So they want to use your data, so they are willing you to they are willing to pay you in order to use your APIs. So you want them to use your APIs and not the APIs of the other bank. So you want to attract them. How are you going to attract them? You need a good documentation. So some API management solutions or API management solutions should include a way in order to expose good documentation in order to attract developers. You need to have a billing system, a way in order to charge them for the usage, in order to provide their API keys so that you can identify the users. You need to create also the, the API management solutions. They are also providing a, world, uh, a way of uh, self-registration, so you don't have to open uh, maybe a home in your firewall in order to allow them to consume your internal services. You, you accept them, but, and you don't need to receive their, their, their phone call in order to allow them to access them. It, everything is managed by the API management solution because it has a, a, a way in order to allow interaction with the external developers. And also you want them to be comfortable using your APIs and you want to create a community. You, you, you have a kind of social network uh, with forums or whatever so that people can help in themselves and uh, be happy using your, your, your APIs. So if you are creating a new revenue stream, maybe the owner of the internal APIs may be thinking, mm, I, I, I want to add more APIs because I want them to pay me more. I want them to create new, I want to create new things so to attract new external developers. So he may be thinking that he could be creating new APIs out of the existing internal APIs without creating code, without modifying anything of the existing. Maybe he can think about uh, mixing existing APIs and exposing a new one and without touching any line of code or creating any new API. And this is another promise that API management solutions give. You can create new API management solution and you don't need to be a programmer. So, all this magic, let, let's see the parts that the IT analysts think when they think about a complete API management solution, a complete <coughs> API manager. So, let's open the box. We have three small boxes inside the, what uh, is understood as an API uh, or fully featured API management solution. We have the API gateway, and the, the API gateway is the one which is doing the, the hard work, is the one which is receiving the connections, the, the, the requests from the users, and is doing all the, the transformations that they are needed, uh, all the validations, is the one that's exposing, uh, that's virtualizing, is uh, where you are collecting the statistics, uh, doing the, the, the hard work, the network work, is uh, where you are managing the share or providing high availability because you don't want to risk your business because you have this new piece of software. So those, all those solutions allow to be 
uh, deployed on the cloud, they can be deployed on several servers. Uh, they are extremely powerful for that because you are also adding a layer to protect your internal APIs for any kind of attacks. So it's uh, also a, an important piece for API management solutions. What's the other piece? Uh, an API administration that usually it's a web page. It's a page where you can define how you are going to expose your APIs. Is the one that the API developers or the API owners decide how to virtualize, how to expose their their APIs. Is where uh, you define the transformations or the all the tricks that you want to do with your internal APIs. It's what they call policies, all the things that you are doing to internal APIs just to bypass them. Not only bypassing, but doing things are called policies uh, uh, almost in all API solutions. This administration page also allows you to access the statistics and to, to do the life cycle management. And the last piece that, uh, that the analysts uh, want to include in order to consider a solution, an um, API management solution, it's a portal. Some uh, co considered API managers, the, the API administration sometimes is called directly API manager, so it's confusing. Sometimes I prefer to call it API administration. Some uh, self acclaimed uh, API managers lack the portal, and uh, the IT analysts prefer not to call them uh, API manager or fully featured API managers. What can you have in the portal? The portal is where the users, the external users, the external developers, the people in the world, in the internet, can uh, explore the APIs you have, look the documentation, maybe test the, the APIs, uh, look for examples, access to the community in case they are registered and they are uh, using the APIs in their internal uh, applications that they are developing, they can have access to their analytics, to their own anal analytics. This is performed by the, by, by the API portal. So we've created a layer in front of your APIs. You are creating a new economy with the, this is the internal uh, idea of the API management solutions. You can put this layer internally and you can create another usage of, of your APIs out of it. But as long as you are creating this new economy, you can have different ways of exposing your APIs and you maybe have a, a, a freemium model in, in, in what you have a quota of a certain number of requests per day or per month freely available to anyone who wants to test your applications. And in case you want more, you can be paying so that you can be attracting uh, new developers. You can have uh, different, different uh, levels uh, in a gold, premium, or whatever, in order to create a new economy. So this is the, the components of a API management solution as the uh, IT analysts uh, review them. So let's see some of the products that are currently on the street that uh, conform to, to this model. Some of the, of the API managers come directly from the ESD world. In the service-oriented architecture, it was, uh, it, it was very uh, usual to find an enterprise service DAS, an ESD, where you could publish, orchestrate, uh, transform, and operate all your, all your APIs. You could create enrichment and choreography. And some of those solutions that were thought to be used internally, the uh, ESDs were pieces that uh, were thought to be used inside your, your, your firewall, inside your intranet. Uh, most of the current API management solutions come out of, of that world, of the ESD world. Uh, some of them, are, and there, there's the, a lot of dances in uh, acquisitions of current API management solutions because it's a, a, a very alive 
uh, world. There are a lot of um, API management solutions that are uh, emerging, and uh, but they are acquired by by different by different vendors, and some others were born directly in the for, for API management, and most of them were more thought uh, for only REST uh, APIs. Uh, Measurely, for instance, uh, was acquired by Intel, and last year was acquired by Tipco. So there's a lot, of, a lot of movement there. The the main IT analysts uh, they <coughs> proclaim as uh, the best or the most promising KPI API management solutions, more or less the same vendors. They talk about Measurely, uh, CA. RPG, these are the ones that we are going to, to, to review or to see at least on a screenshot today. These are the ones that, uh, that I want to, 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 to show you a screenshot today. They are the ones that I have had the opportunity to review. Uh, today, uh, on these days, I've also had the opportunity to review and to see API 9, which is the Red Hat solution. Is a Red Hat uh, solution, but it lacks the the portal component. It doesn't have the the way to allow developers to interact with uh, the, the APIs. So that's the reason why it was not here. Even though uh, Kong is more or less uh, lacks uh, exactly the same. So let's review or let's have a screenshot. Three Scale. It's an API management solution that uh, is based on the on the cloud, you have to install something on your service in order to allow it, but you cannot uh, have it completely on premises. Most of those solutions are not completely on premises. You, you are not going to buy them and install on your data centers. They are, they are not thought for that. They are more thought as a, as a service, as software as a service, where you may have to install something on, on your service. Some other solutions, they are hybrid, they allow cloud or on-premises, or, or, or some of them uh, only uh, on the cloud. This is one of the, the only on the cloud, and you have to install something on your service. It's built basically in Barcelona, so it's uh, capital that comes from the States, but uh, there's a development center in, in Barcelona. You can register you, the, the, the APIs, you can test this solution, and you can, you can. Uh, it's very, it's not very powerful in transformations, for instance. Uh, APG is one of the most powerful solutions. Is they they, they claim their sums to be the most expensive ones as well. Uh, it, uh, it's very cool. Uh, instead of the user, in, in the case of uh, the, the user interface and the features they provide, and they are very clever in order to uh, link the different requests your developers are doing to your, to your APIs. It's a very complete uh, solution as well. Axway and the next one that I'm going to be talking about, they come from the, from the ESV times. Uh, Axway before uh, was called uh, Volvel, was one of the most used ones. And Axway and Layer 7, that was acquired by Computer Associates, uh, are, are similar. They have a front end that is, uh, they, they have two parts. They have a web part and a client part. And the manager is something that, in the, that, that, that lives in the client. The manager that lives in the client is the one that allows you to define maybe visually, and, uh, and, uh, so allowing non technical people to define ideally uh, APIs to define, in that case, using graphs. You are connecting the things that you want to do before or after uh, the request. You can define the transformations or adding the security using this fancy uh, stuff. And uh, in layer 7, instead of using graphs, you are doing exactly the same thing, but using a tree. But it's a, a similar idea. It's very visual, but it, it needs a client, a client tool. It, Mashery was one of the tools, that, that it was acquired by Tipco last year, it's a very, very powerful as well, a lot of transformations out of the box, a lot of cool uh, things on uh, documentation 
and on, uh, on security is, is one of the important players. And now we are going to review one of the, a couple of solutions that are open source because the ones that we've been reviewing are, uh, are expensive. Uh, a part of the API man that I don't know their licensing model. This uh, uh, WSO2 is an open source solution made in Java. You have you can install different parts of it, and you can easily uh, add to your systems if you want to include uh, maybe uh, maybe OAuth 2 authentication to your existing APIs. It's it's not uh, extremely easy to configure, but uh, is is very powerful. They come from the ESB open source. ESB solutions and Conk is uh, similar to API Man. It, they, it's a solution that the people from Mashape, which is an internet registry of APIs, they built in order to manage uh, the, the APIs, and they made it open source. So it's a very simple nginx that you can install. You can try it using Docker, for instance, and uh, uh, you can using you can use their gateway and include uh, great Linux uh, authentication or logging or create your own plugin if you want to do most things. Uh, the way you add new plugins to this Nginx is using Lua language, so it's not much complicated and they don't have a front-end. Well, there, there are some initiatives in order to build a front-end, it's an open source application, so people are creating new stuff around Comp, but basically it's managed based on a, on a REST API that's managing direct, direct, directly com. The title of the talk was putting order to your API ecosystem. So uh, some shops and some organizations, they have a little mess in their, in their internal APIs and some of them they are thinking about using this kind of tools in order to put order to, to what they already have. They not only have uh, their, 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 they have different kinds of APIs. They are consuming APIs, or they are creating APIs that are customer facing. They are the APIs that the users, the external developers, are meant to be using. They also are creating a lot of internal APIs some of them call them microservices, some of them uh, call them uh, any other way, and they are, also, they are also consuming external APIs, APIs that are provided by other vendors or by, or by other, uh, other servers, other companies that they have to interact with. And they have to create something, they need to create something in order to, create, to put all of them into the one way of putting code would be to create a, a single piece where all the requests are managed and you can have a registry and you can have a dictionary. And in the case that you are exposing your APIs to the external world, maybe you want to improve the way the developers are consuming your APIs. Maybe you want to normalize the, the naming. Maybe you want to normalize certain things. So the developers have a, an, an easy life consuming what you are producing. But my, uh, when, I, when you have to think about adding a new li layer of indirection, which is this API management, there are kind of things that you have to question if this is the, the right way to go. You are creating a new layer, and who is going to to control this new layer, who is going to manage it? Which language is going to use? Who is going to create those transformations, those policies? Who is going to learn that language? And are those policies that you are creating version controlled? Some of the vendors, they don't provide version control for the policies. So you are playing around with the GUI, and it's the only way you have in order to define your policies. Do you want that in order to create order to your APIs? For instance, in API Man, the policies are created in Java. Well, uh, you are lacking the promise of you don't need more programmers to expose new APIs, okay? But, but maybe this is 
the thing you need. So you have, you have to think about what, what are the real needs in uh, exposing APIs. You have to think also about the environments. You are having a new tool, do you need a tool, this tool for all the environments, for QA, for uh, pre-production, beta performance, whatever you have in, in your system? And uh, moreover, uh, how is it going to be the life cycle? How are you promoting the policies per environment? Can you have more than one version of, the, of your policies concurrently uh, open and exposed? Do you have, how are you developers going to, to, to modify their existing APIs and interact with the, with the API management? If, if they have to change the version, do they have to, to interact with you somehow? So it's a tool, an API management solution, that you have to think about it before including in the list of things that you have and before thinking that it's going to solve all your problems. If you need to catalog your existing KPIs, maybe you are lacking. In the world of uh, SOA, you have an SOA office where all your SOAP web services had to be registered and they had to conform to certain standards. If you are lacking it and you need it, maybe you have a you uh, kind of API office. Having the tool is not going to replace that need. You have to think about the process and the flows the, that the, your company is going to follow, regardless of the tool that you are choosing. If you want to add cache monitoring for security, maybe you don't need to add a fancy thing that's covering all all this, uh, all this stuff. Maybe you just have to architect your system in order to provide that. And if you want to improve the developer experience, if you want to improve your consistency in the way you are exposing your APIs or the documentation that you are providing, having a tool that allows you to create documentation is not making you create documentation. You have to create a process in order to do that. So, other things that you have to take into account when you are creating your APIs, when you are creating whatever you are creating that you, are, that you have to expose to someone to consume. You have to think about error handling, you have to think about the naming of the, uh, using nouns or verbs, about the consistency that you are using, about the usage of semantic URLs or the usage, the particular usage of the different REST verbs. Are, are you being consistent with that? about how are you going to, to do versioning. If you are a strict REST person, you may be thinking that modifying the version in the URL, you're exposing a different resource, but it's not a different resource, it's a different version, but not a different resource. Maybe you want to use HTTP headers or custom headers in order to expose the, the different uh, versions of your APIs. More things that you have to think about, about how you are handling pagination, how you are handling the security and scalability, and maybe the, the life cycle, how you are promoting or sunsetting your existing uh, APIs. And about documentation, if it's so difficult to have good Java log in your code, it's not going to be easier to have good API documentation. You are not thinking about your consumers. You are not going to be thinking about your consumers neither in your uh, APIs. And creating documentation for APIs using tools like uh, OpenAPI and uh, Swagger is not that difficult. Uh, just if you add uh, certain, certain uh, annotations to your code, you can automatically have them, uh, 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 or semi-automatically, you can generate the, 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 the Swagger files so that they are exposed in the Swagger. You, you don't need to, to add a new tool to your toolbox. So the, the tool is good. All those API, API management solutions are, are very good for what they are made for. And they're exposing KPIs to the internet and are allowing users to self-register and consume your APIs. But most of the things that we are discussing here are about architecture, about 
uh, how you are going to build your things. How are you going to build your things? It's, uh, it means that uh, it's about decisions and conversations with different people. I mean, it's about architecture as a product. You may have something that you name architecture that's shared in your organization. If you are building everything in Java, for instance, maybe you have a single piece of libraries that are shared in all your uh, in all the developments that you are doing, and they can contain all the code related to, to throttling, to scalability, to caching. You may be creating annotations for that or or some other fancy stuff. So. You have to think about not only architecture as a, as a product, but also architecture as a verb. That you have to architect your APIs. And you don't need an architect to architect uh, APIs. You have to think about And you have to have a lot of difficult conversations between different parties. So that, that, that's all about, uh, I can share with you, about uh, API management solutions. So I wanted to share with you what uh, the IT analysts, as Forrester and Garner, define as an API manager. So there are other companies that claim that they have API managers, and they have API managers, but they are not conforming with the definition that those that those IT analysts have. It's okay, but uh, now you are aware of the API portal thing. Now you, you can think about the internal and external facing APIs and you can think how you are creating them, if you are creating them. You've reviewed, you've seen some of the API management solutions, the big ones that are in the market. So that you can think about how can you do things differently. That was the, the main purpose. And I've shared my opinions about how to use the, the, the APIs. And that's all I wanted to say about API management. Any questions you have? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so if, if I have like uh, four APIs or something, like that, each of these APIs are going to have a contract, right? They're all different. Do I need to have something in these contracts that I can hook into an API manager, or is it completely? Isolated. It's completely isolated. You, you can be, it's, uh, most of them are, they require you to manually uh, virtualize the APIs. You, you need to go through a set of menus in order to define how are you going to, to virtualize. It's going to get the contract, or maybe if you don't have an, ex, an explicit contract, if you don't have any contract definition because it's some, a REST API that you know what's the contract, but it's not an explicit contract, you have to define Using, using the tool. You don't need to have anything special in your internal APIs in order to virtualize that. So you can could, you could, you could put this on top of your APIs like years after you've created your APIs? That's the idea. You may have acquired a new company, you are a very big company, and you have bought that other company that they were using SOAP in a very weird way, or they, are, they have rest, or almost rest, because they were building things in COBOL. You don't mind. You expose the, the, that hole uh, and you expose a very nice restful API using the proper verbs because you have this level of interaction. So another question then. In, in what you've seen, where, where would you start to think about an API manager? You start with one API and then you build another API. At what point do you start to think, I think I need to put something in between? Uh, uh, opinions again. I don't think you need them. Okay. <laughs> opinions. If you have a lot and they are internal and they may have a risk for your business and you want to create uh, an economy out of them and you want to charge your consumers, okay, go ahead. If you have one, maybe you, you, you are leveraging that asset and you are paying for the cost that those API management solutions have. If you are charging enough, it's, it's okay. It's the perfect tool because you are going to save a lot of money building the portal, you are saving a lot of money building up the things that they do because they are good tools. But if you don't have the need, you are paying for things that you need. 
Any other question? Thank you very much.